he had a TV show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He had a yeah. TV show, yeah. and then you saw him every yeah. single week. Yeah. He could have been a, like yeah. a straight up gangster yeah. rapper, yeah. but the fact that he was on TV softened him. Yeah. Softened him. So, anyway, we're going to transition from the sports hour and we're going to move on to the social consciousness, entertainment, fun stuff, whatever the hell we want to talk about. Hour. We're going to start off uh, with a staple of Ain't No Half Stabbing with Marcus J. We are going to. Profile a missing child as we do each and every single week. Uh, and this week, the little girl that we're going to profile is a little girl by the name of Miskin Pestal Sage Fasession. She is a victim of family abduction. She is, uh, her date of birth is September 23rd, 2006, which makes her five years old. She has been missing since December 13th, 2011 from Decatur, Georgia. She is a, uh, a female. Uh, she is mixed. She is mixed with Caucasian and black Ethiopian. She's four foot tall, 35 pounds, with black hair and brown eyes. Uh, she may be in the company of her mother. Once again, she is biracial. Uh, to look at her, she looks like a light-skinned black girl, but she is mixed with white and Ethiopian. She walks with a slight limp, and she may go by the name of Megan. I will, of course, put her picture up on my personal uh, my personal page on Facebook as well as the Ain't No Half Stepping page. So if you have seen little Megan out of Decatur, Georgia, please call 1 800 The Lost. 1 800 843 5678. Or hit the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children on their website, www.missingkids.com. Now, it is time. Time! For the fishbowl. If you want to get down with the fishbowl, being led by your man, Big Rube, please call us up, 804-726-3430. Big Rube is going to tell us about the Twitter page. Uh, you can hit us on Ain't No Half Stepping on Facebook. Just search Ain't No Half Stepping. You'll see a picture of yours truly pop up. If you are listening right now and you are on Facebook, please join the page as a fan. We do put things there that you don't necessarily get on the show. Big Rube, you want to tell us about the Twitter page before we go into the Fish Balls Ruben tweet. If you want to hit us on Twitter, you may hit us at N O H L F Steppin S T E P P I N. It's basically no half stepper without the A and half. There it is. There it is. There it is. Hit us on Twitter. You can be down, tweet us during the show, and if we see it and we think it's funny, we will call you out. And now, without further ado, your man Marcus J will step away for a few. And we'll turn it over to Big Rue for the fishbowl. What you got, bro? Bloop, bloop. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy right now. You know, it's my first segment. So, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody who, who put in and, and helped me out with this segment. Definitely. Some of you can hear, some of you can't. Um, I hope everyone enjoys this. This is pretty much what I like to call the fishbowl. Basically what it is, you know how you go to a place and you put your card in a little bowl and if they pick it out, you get like a free lunch or something. The only difference is here, you put your you put things you want us to talk about in the bowl. And basically what's going to happen, I'm going to spit it out and we're going to talk about it. Please give us a call at 804-726-3430. 804-726-3430. Or you can hit us on the Facebook page. We got my man, Comeback's man, in the Facebook page right now. So pretty much you put something on that when we talk about it. He's going to let me know. We're going to talk about it. It's going to be beautiful. And, of course, the Twitter account, no, H-L-F-S-T-E-P-P-I-N. Join. The Twitter movement is beautiful, and we want everybody to be part of it. So, like I said, on the account, on the Facebook account, we got five things we're going to talk about. I know that y'all have opinions. Call in, Twitter, Facebook, hit me up. Gentlemen in the room. The first subject today is, I got a question. This is from one of my co-workers at work um, who will remain nameless. You ain't got no job, Tommy. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean for real. I don't even know why he said that. Uh, I yeah, mean, I'm sorry. Is. My bad. So, why does a spark, question quote, the spark disappear between couples? What? Wow. Wow. That's a good one. They want, they, they want to know what we think about that. So, I'll let Carlton Banks go first. Then we hit the Marcus J., and then I end up and give my opinion on it. Now you want me to go home and get beaten, don't you? Yeah, I mean the yeah, guy who the guy the guy who is he not married. married. Yeah, the one that's not the married. One is not married. But like, you know what? You know what? It's a segment, so we're gonna take him serious. You know what? We'll take him serious. I know. I'm, I'm about to get a beating for this. Hey man, don't be no punk. I ain't gonna be I no, ain't punk. no punk. I ain't gonna be no punk. Honey, I love you. 
Love you, honey. <laughs> you ain't got to do all that. Just go ahead and keep it real. Why did yeah. you disappear, brother? Why did you disappear? You don't disappear. Just go on vacation for a little while. I don't have to like you the whole time we're together. I look at you. I see you. I smell you. I, I lay beside you. You know, the magic's not gone. We just, we're just on vacation. So do you just put it up in a box in the closet or something, or...? No, it's just right there. It's still I can look at it. It's right there on the on the corner of the um, the dresser. So when you go touch it, when is it time to go touch it? When that urge hits. I mean, is it like every day, six months later? I mean, talk to me. I mean, yeah, I do it. I can't give you so much detail. <laughs> you can get me the hell up. I mean, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> you we just say it. Hey, I'm just saying. I, lo- I love my wife. I love my wife. I love my wife. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love my wife. Oh, you're not you're not like that Chris Rock's movie. I think I love my wife. I said I want some duck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark J. I mean, I mean, really, honestly, life gets in the way sometimes. You know, you go to work every single day, and you deal with the crazy people at work, and you come home, you cranky, and he or she might say something that really annoyed you, and the next thing you know, you're not speaking for two or three days. Yeah. I mean, it it, it kind of happens. I mean, and then you have the work pressure, and then you have the raising your family pressure, and then you have, you know he annoys you or he didn't do what I asked him to do or she doesn't do what I need her to do all of these things play into it and I think that that will absolutely dim the spark to the point where you could potentially find yourself falling out of love depending on you know how bad it gets Mm -hmm. for you as an individual couple I think when you start off as friends that gives you the opportunity to potentially have a little bit of a buffer that saves you when you get to that point yeah but if you don't have that foundation early on when you run into a situation where that spark hits it's tough and here's the other thing every single time you run into a rough patch it takes a little bit longer to come back from it true Mm -hmm. so unless you work at it every single time and you are honest and you look him or her in the face and be like look I'm upset and this is why you don't take it personal you just receive the information that you're getting from your partner if you can do that then you got a shot when that spark starts to dim gotcha gotcha well I I like to agree with both of y'all um as you said you know I'm not currently um married you married you single you ain't got no wife I mean you ain't ain't got no wife (laughs) you are single you can have a girlfriend but you are single until you are married he can send her ass home whenever he wants however and she can send him home too however let's let him let him talk you know I'm you know when the spark dims when you can't sleep in the same bed and you can't look each other well no I'm just saying when you can't look each other with the same face you know maybe you just gotta make sure you take Take it done. Like Marcus J said, life happens sometimes. I get it. I understand. You know, um, all I can do is is basically the only opinion I can give is, hey, look, you know, you in this for the long haul. You know, as they both said, there's some rough patches, but it's all about how you go through those rough patches and how you come on the other end. Now, I, I will I will tell you this one thing. I said I sleep in my bed every night. I did get kicked out the other night. <laughs> But the only reason I got kicked out the bed, because I kept snoring. I snored t- <laughs> like three or four times at one night. And I got tired of her waking me up. I got up. I was cussing and screaming. I said, like, I'm going to the other room. And as soon as I got another bed, I was back out again. I mean, really. I, I it, That's the only time I'm not sleeping in my bed. Yeah. I guess my only rule with, in my relationships, you know, is don't Ships. go. How many women you hey, got? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey <Ruba. laughs> He's an oh, overweight, oh, overweight hey, lover in the house. The house. <laughs> hey. I'm just saying, don't go to sleep mad. Because if you go to sleep mad, somebody has stuff festers. You know, I'm a big person about lay it all out, get done with it before you go to sleep. All right, next next topic today. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a sports topic. But, you know, this is what was given to me, and this is what I'm going to do. My boy um, Q down in Virginia Beach was simply like, you know, I'm sick of talking about Tim Tebow. Wow. How come nobody talks about Matt Prater? Matt and Prater. I and I thought about that. Matt Prater's the kicker. You know, what's this a Saturday so, Night Lights skit? Well, no. So I, I thought about it a little bit, and the dude is nineteen for twenty five this season. Not pretty. Whatever. Since Tebow's been running, he's only missed four field goals. Not pretty. That's funny. That's real funny. <laughs> this guy, this guy's a joke. This guy's got a joke. The overweight lover Ruben B. You know what I'm saying? That's how I used to say it back in the day when I was, you know, I was 
<laughs> Girl, everybody no. put their name in there. <laughs> I mean, you had to. I man. didn't. Well, oh, you, know, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's always those skinny cats, man. But um, but the thing about it is, throughout this this winning thing he has, he this dude's kicked a fifty-two and a fifty-nine yard field goal. He's got four game winners. How come nobody's talking about Matt Prater? Nobody's talking about Matt Prater because he's the kicker. And the I mean, kickers it, it, don't get glory. It, it's that simple. He's the kicker. He, and a look it up kicker says something, and now he got his foot stuck in his mouth. Well, I mean, it really, at the end of the day, when's the last time we paid attention to the kicker? Really? We don't pay attention to the kicker. I mean, and we know that the kicker a lot of times is going to be the reason that you win or you, or you lose. Yeah. People still talk about Scott Norwood all these years <laughs> later, <laughs> Buffalo Bills co- uh, kicker, who oh, is I a big part it. of the reason why the Giants won the Super, uh, the Super Bowl he is in, the in 1990. He misses, he misses a field goal. That's pretty much the only time a kicker's name comes up when he doesn't do what you need him to do. It's kind of like the closer in baseball. If your name's not Mariano Rivera for the most part, you don't know the name of the closer. Who was the name of the closer on the St. Louis Cardinals who won the World Series this year? Does anybody remember? Lee Smith? Lee Smith? Oh, come on, man. Seriously, he retired like 25 years ago. Oh, you talking about this year? Exactly. That's my point. Nobody knows the name of the kicker. Nobody knows the name of the closer. Every once in a while. Kickers are paid to do one thing. uh, uh, Kick. And then see, here's the other thing. We can say what we want about Tim Tebow and his production and all of that stuff. The guy has rock star looks. He got rock star looks. He got rock star personality. He, you know, is is a Christian. So you got that, you know, segment of the population yeah. who are going to be behind him. And got through for 316 yards. But then, the you know, days before he does that, he comes out and says John 16, 316 is his favorite quote. Then he throws for 316 yards. I mean, you can't write this stuff. Right. <laughs> you, you can't write this stuff. And That's why we talk about Tim Tebow and not the kicker. And another reason why you don't bring in the kicker is, who got him in that position to do that? Yeah, and, 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 be, had to lead the and I'll be honest with you. Right now, this moment, as we're talking about this, I forgot the kicker's name. Prater get cut next season. Prater, yeah. What's his name? Matt Prater. Matt Prater. What's his name again? That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> but seriously, but in all seriousness, that's why. That's why. All right, before I get to my next check, I agree with you. I just feel like you kick a 59 yard field goal. Somebody needs to be buying. Tebow needs to be buying this dude something. What's the guy's name? And um, I think it might have been another Denver quarter uh, a kicker. I don't remember the team, but there was some guy who kicked like a 62 yard a couple years ago. Sebastian Janikowski. Is that who it was? Uh, Seabass wow. got the record. Yeah, he, that's he who tied, got the record. Seabass tied the record. Right, but I'm a football fan, and I couldn't call his name. I can't even remember the team he played for. I remember the number because that's Raider. how my mind works. He's a current Raider. But uh, yeah, yeah but I feel like you say it. You see the point I'm making? Like well, nobody pays attention. Seabass to the is the oldest Raider. Still playing. Okay. Yeah. He's been in the league almost 13 years. And sad. <laughs> and I'm told to move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which which was funny, which brings me to a point before I get to the next section, where for you wrestling fans out there, Stone Cold Steve Austin that's my pretty much right said, It Yo. doesn't matter. Oh, no, he, that's not Steve. He, now, now, that's the rock idiot. Oh. Now, pretty much. <laughs> See, I don't watch wrestling. Really? Nah, you I, know I, the guy I, the Stone Cold Stunner ball head on Be a Vince McMahon? Hey man, back I, in the day, hey, remember I, it was House of Couches and Austin and stuff? 16. Just says yeah, exactly. I just whipped your butt. You look yeah, like so, D'Lo Brown. Yeah, yeah, but still, it's one of those things where he pretty much came out and said, "Hey, look, you know, if Tebow comes out and he does it again this year, then I mean, does it again next week? Then he can have three sixteen, Austin three sixteen to retire, and then call Tebow three sixteen. I thought that was funny. Which goes to our next thing. I mean, you know. You know, we never mind. Yeah. Move on. Move on. <laughs> which, which goes to our next thing. You know, we really don't talk a lot about wrestling because that's sports entertainment, and that's not really sports per, per se. But yesterday, um, WWE released. Yeah, that's so called Steve Austin. Y'all don't know. The man who could be up his boss and still keep his job. But yesterday, it was come out that to be inducted into the Hall of Fame next year. It was Edge. Nobody really cared about Edge as much as much as the Four Horsemen. Finally, the Four Horsemen will be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. The question wow. is, the question is, really? Yeah, a lot of people don't know a lot about wrestling, but everybody knows who the Four Horsemen is. What do y'all think? Ric Flair, the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, and who's going to be the fourth one? Because it, it, it that, depends. That I mean, last one, that last number, he got. Which one of the four is going to be in there? Well, what's what's going to happen is the one that, that the group that they put out, which a uh, different topic for a different day, was, of course, you know, um, Ric Flair, who's already inducted. 
Um, we have um, Arn Anderson. We have Tully Blanchett, the name you was looking for, looking for, and we have Bay Wyndham. Now, Bay Wyndham is the question mark because ah, that's the four horse of thieves song. It's beautiful. I've been listening to four horse stuff all day, but still, Bay Wyndham is a is a dude who was a the Western States Heritage Champion for like twenty years, a championship that nobody ever cared about, but he became a four horseman. Exactly, but everybody knows who the four horsemen is. Well, I mean, give me your opinion. I, I, hey, look, you gotta. Well, here, let me let me just say this. As a wrestling fan, I grew up in the Northeast, so my wrestling foundation rests with WWWF when it was Worldwide yeah, yeah, Wrestling yeah. Federation, and then shortened the World Wrestling Federation now WWE. So I came a little bit late to the Ric Flair Four Horsemen. The four horsemen is giving me right now. However. They are the epitome of a wrestling stable. Period. And it doesn't matter who they put in. If you were a part of the Four Horsemen, you get to go in as a member of the Four Horsemen. I don't think anybody's putting Tony Blanchard in the Hall of Fame as an individual. But because he was a member of the Four Horsemen, he gets to go in. So let's go through the list. Oh, jeez. We got Ric Flair. We got Arn Anderson. Uh-huh. We got Ole Anderson. Yep. We got Tully Blanchard. Yeah. We got Lex Luger. Yeah. We, got, we got Sting. Yeah. We got Chris Benoit. Yeah, we don't talk about him. We don't talk about him. J.J. Dillon is the manager. Yeah. Mongo, I mean, Steve Mongo McMichael. Mongo McMichael. We're Kevin Green, if I think. For, no, no, nah, no. Kevin, Kevin Green was. But Mongo, Mongo um, was a part of it. So um, Yeah, a couple other people. It was a, yeah, so there's a large group of people. So that's what I'm saying. Who, which, but it, but it, doesn't, it doesn't matter as individuals, I guess is what I'm saying is, if you were a part, you get to represent the horseman. Doesn't mean you go in as an, as an individual, because I don't put Arn Anderson in as an individual. I yeah, don't put nah, Tully nah. Blanchard in as an Never individual. That. I don't put J.J. Dillon in as an individual. Uh-huh. But I put them in as members of the Horsemen. So right. if you go in and you want to you know, put a bust of the Horsemen, yeah. and if Mongo McMichael is available uh, to show up for WrestleMania the yeah, night yeah, before yeah. for the induct- in- induction ceremony, I say go for it. I, I I disagree. I I like the original four personally. It give me my Ole, give me my Arn, give me my Tully, and give me my Ric Flair. And because to me, when I think of four horsemen, those are the first four that that's the first four names that come to my mind. I don't think about the other ones or anything like that. They to me, I grew up in the East, the the Southeast, and that was an NWA. That was Ric Flair. That was um, Dusty Rose, Barry Wyndham. Uh, Magnum T.A., Ivan and Nikita Koloff, Crusher Crucia. Yeah. Where's Jay wow. Grizzly would call in right now? J.Y.D. Yeah, it's a perfect, perfect time. Yeah, this yeah. is a perfect time for Jay Grizzly. You know, I had J.Y.D., I had Ricky J- um, Ricky Steamboat. Yeah, yeah. Jay well, you could argue Steamboat. J.Y.D. made his name in WWE, though. Well, he did. He's already inducted. But he, but He's to also me, J.Y.D. Away. made his name with, um, with NWA. Yeah. Same thing with Sweet Ebony Diamond, you know. Who? Sweet Ebony Dunn. I have no idea who that is. You don't know who Sweet Ebony Dunn? I have no wow. idea. We will be looking that up on the break. I will show y'all Sweet Ebony Diamond the rest well, of the you know, uh, Clearly, Carlton and I are back to disagreeing. <laughs> and, you know, which, which feels good to disagree with my brother yeah. Carlton over here. Big Rube, you didn't give us your opinion. Oh, you? I mean, me, I, 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 I agree with the original four. You know, I think everybody else is cool. I was questioning the part where when they showed the clip, and you can go to WWE.com and look at the clip. Not that I'm promoting them or anything. But they had Barry Windham in there. I was a little bit put back because that's probably the strongest group of four horsemen. But it wasn't but, the original. But it wasn't the original. You know, maybe WWE and Ole Anderson got beef or something. Well, I can find that. O- Ole Anderson was, you know, I know a little bit about the backstory. Ole Anderson was a very difficult person to get along, yeah. which is the reason why he got replaced to begin with. He didn't just disappear. You know, he was yeah. a, he was the K Fab brother of the of Arn Anderson. K Fab means wrestling storyline. Yeah. He was the K Fab brother of Arn of, of Arn Anderson and he couldn't get along with the rest of the horsemen, so he was replaced by he, he was replaced by Barry Windham's. That's that's what that was. That's cool. So I, I again I don't have a problem with them going in as a group. Kinda reminds me of the Temptations. You know, they had their classic uh, you know they had their classic lineup that most people know of. Yeah. But most people don't know that that classic lineup wasn't the original lineup of Temptations. Yeah. And it so, still looked the same. And it's still great. So. All right. it, it is what it is. Cool. Three down, two to go. Let's do it. Now, um, probably the the biggest thing I did plug one news story, um, because I need to fill up some stuff. 
How much longer is Apple going to survive? Who? Apple. Apple. It, the reason why I say that is, you know, I don't know if any of y'all watched, but they released how much the new CEO, Tim Cook, got last year. Well, he got now $100,000 as a base salary. Cool. No problem with that. He also got $377 million in stocks. Wow. $378 million in one year. Now, contrast, Steve Jobs only got paid a dollar a year, but he maintained uh, majority stock. This so he's already paid. Does Steve Jobs need money? Yeah, but but that's the point. It's like Bill Gates. Gates. So you, but you're giving, you're giving Tim Cook $378 basically million dollars. I mean, what's going to happen? Is the iPhone going to start, like, walking now? I mean, really? But the difference between those two men is, one, Jobs, that was his company. That was his baby. Yeah. He, he grew that. You know, the next man is not going to have the same um, reasoning to take a pay, pay cut or anything of that nature. That was what Steve Jobs wanted to do. Um, I can't fault this man for getting what he's got. And, you know, the board of trustees, who I would assume – where some of the same members under Steve Jobs mm-hmm. voted so he can get that. But where do you come up with that number, $378 million in stock? I, I mean, do you just put it out there? Hey, here's $378 million in stock. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing that they have some sort of formula that they use to determine, you know, they look at how much stock the company is worth and then they look at how much they want to pay the executives. But, I mean, this goes to the fact that our country's structure at the top of these companies is all screwed up to begin with you know when you got one of the people talking about he likes firing people now we know that comment was somewhat taken out of context because yeah. the whole comment was i like firing insurance companies and his opponent said i like firing people look at what mitt just said but the point that i'm making is the whole structure mm-hmm. is all messed up when they care more about the companies and the top people who run these companies and less about the people that work in that Apple store yeah. that yep. make $10 an hour that get fired because they call out because their daughter's sick. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, most definitely. So, uh, you know, it's hard for me to comment on something like this because then, you know, my right fist goes up with the <laughs> glove on it. and We are the nation. That's the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Inside joke. Um <laughs> it's not true. Marcus J yeah, is at a loss for words. I wish there was a camera yeah, to get that. Sure I wish. Yeah, thank well, you. Well, because I mean, unless unless you knew the three of us fifteen years ago, and there were a few of us, you know, yeah, that maybe listening, you would get the D'Lo Brown <laughs> reference that Big Rude read. If you ever watch wrestling, and you know D'Lo Brown, Big Rude used to bury. He had, Minim- a baseball. he had a minimal resemblance, but we all made it minimal. seem like he had a great right. resemblance to the guy. But Man, anyway, the guy had his own chest plate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but anyway, I mean, back to back to back to your 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 your, your fishbowl comment there. I just it's hard for me to really get in on that one without taking it in a completely different you know in yeah. a completely different direction. You. So it's laughable that somebody is going to make nine hundred thousand dollars as a salary but then his bonus and i'm not good with math but it sounds like about 300 percent more than you know something like that nah man well, uh, it, it's like thirty thousand percent more yeah well, more than what yeah. he, he's <laughs> making a salary well my question is this how many stocks does a company have you know what what, what defines you getting three some three something in stock how many stocks are there for me to be selling this off. I mean, now, I'm actually selling part of the company. Okay, so who determines? Well, what happens is, what is when, a the stock? when the stock's created, let's say you started 100 stocks, and it's worth so much, then you want to sell some, so you split. So you got 100 and 200, then 200, 400, 400, 800, and then it's just built. It's probably like a million stocks out there, and he owns 370 million of them. You know, is that if they all worth like $6 a piece, and it's, you know, the math does itself, but that's that's the craziness of that the world we live in. All right, and the last one today, um, in the the tone of, you know, begin New Year, I'm gonna lose weight, you know, I'm gonna go to the gym, that sort of thing. Detox, detoxification of your body. What do you think about that? Man, I know some people who take that mm, that stuff to a whole nother level. But I, I really about to say, I about to pull a J. Can y'all get me to cuss y'all today for real? <laughs> I need to cuss y'all. I can't, <laughs> I can't take this. 
I, I mean, I know some people who really take that to a whole nother level. I really think, in truth be told, you hurt yourself more so than anything by taking all these pills to make you go to the bathroom to um, X less yourself, X lax yourself a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Well, there are healthy ways to do it. Yeah, just eat some damn vegetables. <laughs> I mean, for real. Uh, it doesn't kill you to eat some vegetables. It's no reason to take an additive. Or, you know, hey, Cheerios is doing it for you. Get some, they, hey, the first thing they put in their cereal is fiber. I, I put, I, I'll plug them right quick. Get yourself some fiber. Get yourself some vegetables. Don't take all these other pills. I mean, people be going to get these colonics, talking about they see a tape worm coming out. And look, ain't nothing going up my butt to shoot no water up it and then pull it out and then I'm going to sit there and watch it. Ain't no way that's happening, okay? It's bad enough. I go in the bathroom and get a case of the runs, and that's going to happen. I am not about to be colonic, x lax to death, and, and slim fast, and all that other stuff, for real. Y'all, people be killing me with that stuff, man, for real. Once again, we disagree. <laughs> yeah, we can disagree. <laughs> Once again, we disagree. Go ahead, get your I mean, detox on. It, well, I mean, I have detox. I usually do it about four times a year, every season. Uh, but you don't do it from a pill. I know what you do, but you don't do it from a pill. I you, have. You have. Well, I, I have. You, I thought you used to just do the fruit and I, I poultry. Do, I do that too. I okay, have, that's what I, I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, I, I fast. Okay. I, I work out. I drink a lot of water. And he's about two pounds when he works out. <laughs> well, I mean, when I when I when I go through those phases, I have, you know, I, I eat very little. I already don't eat pork, and I eat very little beef, uh, mm -hmm. maybe once or twice a month at most. Uh, and I have done the the pill detox, and I look at it like this. It's kind of like taking vitamins. You know, people, we, we grew up with take your vitamins, take your vitamins. I mean, we Hulk Hogan fans. We're talking about wrestling. Take your vitamins and say your prayers, that whole thing. So it depends on what you take. You know, yeah. it depends on uh, what the pills you take are based in. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of these things that are on the market, you know, is nonsense. Yeah, but true, true. at the end of the day, we all know that our colons, which are about 20 feet, if you get to pull them out of your body and line it up next to you, your large intestine, your colon, and I don't mean to get nasty and graphic, but real talk, it's about 20 feet long yeah, yeah. wrapped around your innards. Yeah, yeah. And it's full of crap, of stuff. And it is a good idea to clean that all out. Now, you can say, like Carlton said, just eat some vegetables. We know that green vegetables is a natural detoxing. But, like anything, sometimes you might need a little bit of help. You need a push. You might need a little push. You need somebody and, to coax And it. again, at the risk of being a little too graphic, I mean, as I stated, I have detoxed, and it helps. You I'll just, I'll the, just, you I'll just, the color we're not, we're not, we're not going to do that. We're, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. But I, I <laughs> we're not going to do that. See, you see, you always trying to take me there. He always be real. He always tries to take me there. See, I try to be serious. Try to get a smear. <laughs> yeah, I try to be, sm I try to be serious to try to run a nice, honest show. But he always got to drag me down into the gutter with him. That's why I love him. Can't stand him, but that's why I love him. That's why I love him. Uh, so you know it, it 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 is what it is. So mm. well, you know, what do you what do you what do you what do you think about that big group? Well, I mean, basically, the reason why this came up is because in about two three weeks, Big Rube is gonna do a detox himself for the first time in his life. He's gonna do a controlled detox. Um, I don't know exactly what I'll be eating or partaking of, but I'll be doing a controlled detox. And I was just curious to see what other people thought, see what my cohorts think. You know. I, I plan to definitely give a full, full, um, you know, knowledge base after after I'm done it. Hey. I'll let you see if I feel any better, if I lose any weight, you know, if I'm throwing up, if, if whatever. You know, whatever happens. What, what you going to use? You going to use I some mean, type of rhubarb? You know, I don't know what's going on yet. I'm not planning it. Oh, okay. You know, someone else is planning it, and we're uh -oh. doing it together. So I, I plan to go ahead and, and, and try that. You know, because you always got to try things once in your life, and this is what I'm going to try. So we're going to try it out, and you know, I hope to lose you know some weight so because of it. Let's but go back to your first question about the spark. Are you doing this with a woman, a female, or are you doing this with one of your boys? I am not doing it with one of my boys. I am doing it with a young lady. Are you doing it with one? Okay. You know what? You good. You real good. I she mean, she'd have got you. She'd have you, know, you. But you know, it's one of those things, man. That you know, I'm big rude for a reason. Hey, I'm uh, not small, Rube. Hey, but you know, 
I don't want to be super big Rube. Right, right. So, I, it, it's and healthy wise, it's time for me to go ahead and at least make a strong attempt to break it down. I'm almost a big four. Oh, once you get four, losing weight's kind of hard. So, I figure I'll go ahead and get a kid. They do they run all day, every day. You know, and I'd rather not get a kid nor to lose weight. <laughs> so, we're, we're going to work on, you know, the detox first. Right. And we'll see where we go from there. But, um, I like to thank everybody for. You know, no, no, we ain't gonna leave this detox. Yeah, for a actually, we, 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 we all gonna leave this detox <laughs> because it's time. It's time to roll out, not roll out, but you know, it's time to go something different. But thank you for the for the fishbowl. You know, if you're interested, make sure you hit us up on the Facebook page. Hit us up on the Twitter, N O H L F S T E P P I N. Hit us that on the Twitter. Just if you got any else, anything to say, that sort of thing, I appreciate it. If you got any questions after the show, hit us up on Facebook. We'll answer it. You know, and like I said, a couple weeks, I'll let you know what happened with the detox. And hopefully, either next week or the week after, we'll come back with another fishbowl. Marcus J, back to you, brother. Appreciate it, man. I, I, I enjoyed that. That was fun. Good. We can, we can, we can do the fishbowl callback. Yeah, we think? can do the fishbowl, but we ain't doing no detox. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can do the fishbowl. I can all y'all want. I got somebody who will be right there with y'all, too. We can do the fishbowl. You know, it's funny because, you know, I was watching the news the last couple of days, and I saw a couple of stories that made me say, what? The hell. What the hell, man? The hell? Seriously? What the hell? What the hell? So I... I really don't want to get into all of them. We're going to just do one. That's cool. We're going to just do that. one. Maybe two. But we'll definitely say. one. Yeah. The first one happened in Gwinnett County, Georgia, where oh third graders were given math homework last Wednesday, and they were asked questions about slavery and beatings. And one of the parents told the schools, uh, who, who told the, uh, the news station, it, it blew him away. One of the questions read, each tree had 56 oranges. If eight slaves picked them equally, then how much would each slave pick? Awkward silence comes over the room. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm doing the math in my head. I mean, I'm... I'm if all he got is, is how many man. doing the math... Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, uh, the I, slave I, portion I, I got is... is uh, who? Wait a minute. This is in Gwinnett County, Georgia. Oh, yeah, that's a, what the The hell? teachers... Now, in the interest of full disclosure... These ain't just white teachers. There's some black teachers in there as well. Yeah. We're not throwing nobody under the bus. However, my question is this. Mm -hmm. In a country where the state of Texas is trying to remove all traces of slavery from history books altogether, you got math teachers in Georgia that want to give third graders math questions about slavery that make direct references to slaves. I got a problem with that, Big Root. I mean... Why are we talking about this? I mean, because it's deep south. That's why we're talking about it. Gwinnett County has not been the first... I've heard Gwinnett County before. I've never been there. But this is not the first time they've been in the news for something incredibly stupid. I'm pretty sure if we Googled it, we could find some other things that they've been in there for. But, I mean, you know... Why even talk about slaves unless you're talking about slavery? You know, you're not talking about slavery in math. So, you know, the only thing you got to talk about slavery in math is some people couldn't count. Other than that, there's no reason to bring it up. I think it's mind control. I think those teachers were completely inappropriate. I think completely. that I think I think that any time you slowly try to indoctrinate the children with references such as this, I think you're trying to brainwash them. You know, yeah. they got studies already that show certain counties. You know, all over the country that already going to tell you how much money you're going to die with it's going to tell you how many kids in that class are going to actually graduate from high school yep. how many kids are going to end up in jail how do you think they got the money to build these jails yeah and so they want to introduce things like that to the to the, to not to eight and nine year olds where i got a daughter that's eight years old that would drive me absolutely up a wall one of the proudest days that i had was when my daughter came home and told me that the teacher told her, or asked her, I should say, why would she want to talk about Malcolm X during Black History Month? That was a very proud day for me. We're going to go ahead and take a call. We got one of our favorite listeners and one of our favorite guest co-hosts, April, on the line. Girl, what's up? Hey, 
Oh, what's up? How are you doing? Doing good. We doing good. What you got? What you got for us, girl? I am not taking a detox. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I heard that. Stuff. I heard that. First of all, it was, I love the fishbowl. That was great. You were like, you really need to keep that in. I love that. that was I appreciate good. it. Appreciate it. Um, Thank yo, what the hell? The math questions. Yeah. I know I'm a teacher. Right. So I'm a teacher, so you know I was gonna call in on this one. Right. How many times you ask your students that? <laughs> I've never asked my students that. Like I understand from an article I read, one of the teachers was saying they were trying to make it re- relevant or tie it in the social studies. <laughs> that. But I'm serious. That's what he said. I'm saying he, but that's what the teacher said. The reason was they were trying to tie it in to what they were studying in social studies. However, completely, completely, completely inappropriate. And I would be so surprised if these people keep their jobs. Really. Like, I, that's that's just completely inappropriate. I agree. Wrong. I agree. Wrong. Let me get There's you a... There's so many other ways to tie division and subtraction into social studies without going there. That's so wrong. Let me, no. let me get your opinion on one more story. Sure. Uh, that I haven't introduced to the fellas yet. Uh, <laughs> what the hell is up with that girl giving the wrong name and getting herself deported from Texas to Columbia. <laughs> what the hell is up with that? She gets arrested. Right. And instead of saying we'll use, you know, fraud names just to make a point. Let's say, you know Her name was April. She used April. Let's let's say her name let's say her name is, is 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 Keisha Jenkins and Keisha Jenkins says my name is April Jones and April Jones got warrants. And so when they check Keisha's name under April, they find that April is dirty, so they deport right. her ass to Columbia. Right. <laughs> and I, right. Did you hear about this, April? I did. So what you think I, about I, this, I've been man? Following that too. I've been following that too. And you know, I can be, um, I can be a little cynical and hard-hearted at times. A little really cynical. They should have kept her ass there. Damn. Well, because what? Like, I, she was a runaway, and I guess she gave her name what so that she could stay away from her parents. Right. I don't know the full. Now she's far away. So why but she, she just gave the false name? I'm assuming it was because she was trying to stay away from her parents. Right. You know. But it's almost like that's what you get. Like seriously. Can you imagine I, that collect call? I'm gonna get a collect call from Columbia. 